Hey guys, this is Eric Weiner with Weiner Racing. Today's video is the video you guys have been waiting for for a long time. And this video on our 496 Big Block Dino Mule, we compared three different sets of heads and they're all oval ports. We compared the Promax 290s, a set of Brodex Race Right 270 oval ports, and a set of AFR 265 oval ports too. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, this head is here just for demonstration purposes. This is actually BB2+. Plus. I don't have the 270 head anymore. I'm using it because this chamber is the same as the 270. So I'm using it for that. As another note, several of you are like, no, nah, that's a rectangle port, not, a, not an oval port. Those are actually considered rovals or not rectangles. See the difference in the, that's a rectangle, BB2+. Plus. That's a roval. Um, just to give you an idea, this is a solid gasket here. This is an oval port gasket set it up here and you can tell boom they're about what an oval is they are considered an oval port head it just is what it is so three heads compared these that head was actually used on the dyno this is just for demonstration purposes i don't want someone commenting oh obviously you didn't compare them um i did so you have the pro max 290 the afr 265 and the brodex race right 270s before I get into it too deep, all the information that you'll see on this video is actually available in this book. And you can go to my website, wengines.com. I'll put that link in my description for this video. And on that, on my website, there's a link to my online store and you could purchase this book. So if you have a hard time seeing it on the screen, which I imagine most of you do, or if you feel like I'm going too fast for this, you can just purchase the book. It's not just this test, it's everything that was done with that 496. So, for instance, next week's, next Sunday's video is um, we tested five different intake manifolds on this Promax 290 head. So, that will be next week. You can get to see all of those. This week is just comparing the three heads. So, all that information's in here as far as even dyno sheets and information on the engine itself, which you're about to see some of it. So, what is the actual engine that was used? It was a 496 big block Chevy, uh, a guy named Nick from DZ Performance. He's got a YouTube channel. He... Um, he donated the short block for us to get for to use, and he helped me out at Dunsworth Machine Shop in Enid, where we dynoed, and we spent three days in the dyno and tested a whole bunch of different stuff, like six different heads, three oval ports, obviously, a bunch of different intake manifolds. The engine itself would be a scat rotating assembly, um, mall pistons, or molly, I don't care how you say it, whatever. Um, a, the compression ratio varies, which I'll explain in a minute because it's based on chamber size, but in general, it's between 10.8 and 11.08 on this test. Um, the camshaft is a hydraulic roller, uh, 243, 247, about 630 lift, 110 lobe separation. Intake manifolds, well, it varied. You're going to see a couple. So on all three of the um, oval ports, I tested a single plane, the 454O, and on all three was also tested the Elderbrock Performer RPM air gap. So all three of those were tested. So it was a really interesting deal to get to see if maybe there was a bigger difference between one intake manifold to the other. So that was tested as well. The carburetor was a 4150 1000 CFM Pro Systems carburetor. And that's pretty much the gist of it. But let's get to some of the data so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is in the book. I've got sticky notes, so hopefully it saves me some time. So I did measurements for the entire intake port for the um, Brodex Race Right 270s. And I'm going to give you a whole bunch of the information as we go along. It had a 225 intake valve and a 180 exhaust valve. It, however, was not exactly from factory stock. And what I mean by that was, I mean, they did come from factory this way, but it's modified slightly. And here's what I mean. From the factory, when you order a Race Right head, they have a 119cc head chamber. That's just what they have. This particular one that we used on the dyno, and you can order it from this way from Brodix, was 115 cc chamber to get the compression ratio up. And if I go to my next page, the Brodix gave us a yield because of the 115 cc chamber was 10.6 compression ratio. Okay, now to the Promax. The Promax had a 225 intake valve as well and a 180 exhaust valve. So the same as the Brodix race rights. However, its chamber is much smaller at 110 cc's. And these are all the measurements from inside the port in case you're wondering. And with 110 cc's on the chamber size, because this is it, and I've done a valve job since then, which is in a later video that I've already recorded, so you can see that later, but this was a chamber, 110 cc's. Um, because of that smaller chamber size, we got a compression ratio of 11.08. 
Now for the AFR 265, it was different from the other two. It actually has the smallest intake valve of the three heads tested at a 219. And it had a 188 exhaust valve. Its, its chamber was 113 cc's, which gave it 10.8 compression ratio. And I should point this out. This AFR 265, you can order it in a couple different ways. You can order with what they call a fine finish CNC port on their chambers. And that's how this was. Because they actually do have a 110 cc option. And what you'll see is the CNC machines are really rough um, cuts and when it does it. My other fact, I should point this out too. Even though if you order this AFR 265 and you're going to say, it's, they claim it's as cast. No, it's completely CNC ported. But the finish is very, very rough. Um, because it's, they're trying to blast through it as quick as possible because they're not really charging you for the full CNC job like they normally would. Um, but it did have the option for the 113cc chamber, which made the chamber size bigger, but it made it actually supposedly flow better. The chamber itself was a lot smoother. But 10.8 compression ratio. Now, I did flow them on my Signs Digital 680 Bench 4310 bore. I flowed all three heads. We'll get to that. Because this is where it gets kind of interesting when you look at the flow numbers versus the power that they made. It's, it's somewhat different. These are the race rights first. And you should know this, that all big blocks have a long runner and a short runner. Um, the long runner typically is what people advertise because it flows more. So here you have a long runner flow on the race rights. And its peak flow was 324, 700. However, you look at 400, 241, it's really low. Short runner is about the same, but it only flows like 319, 320 at peak there. The exhaust flow, and this one's different. The race right besides the um, AFR and Promax, it's the only one that has a stock exhaust port height. So its bolt holes are actually at the same exact height as stock as like a 781. Due to this, it's ports lower, so it doesn't flow as well on the exhaust side. 232 CFM is not that great. So um, anyway, and this one just might have been a fluke to be that bad, but it just wasn't as good um, as far as flowing as some of the others I've flowed before. As I've seen some of these, they will hit 250 on the exhaust port, uh, exhaust flow. This one didn't even hit that. And this was out of exhaust pipe. Um, still, if you remember that 324 number, it will seem not that bad at peak. But wait till you see the power difference, so it's kind of unique. Now to the Pro Max. Now the Pro Max, it wins in the flow department on all three of them were tested. Its peak flow is 345 at 700 on the long run, or 341 on the short. Great 400 number, 274, 266, great there. Exhaust, really good at 282 CFM peak. It's, it's good. It's just great. And I better back this up too. Of all the heads, Promax actually sent these heads for me to test. I say that they gave them to me, but really they sent a return label, so I have to send them back whenever I'm done testing. But nobody else sent the heads. So, and they didn't ask for any favoritism at all. They didn't say, hey, can you uh, make us look good? None of that stuff. I promise none, especially since I wasn't getting paid by them at all. I would for sure wouldn't have done it. Not that it would have mattered anyway, but I'm not getting a dime from Promax. I just got a set of heads to use. So I want to be upfront though and say, hey, something, they did donate, the others two didn't. And not, they might have, I just didn't ask. We already had the race right 270s and 294s, which got tested in a later, uh, at the same dyno session, but you'll see later. Um, but anyway, AFR also, I didn't ask. So there's your Promax numbers. Now let's get to the AFR numbers as far as flow. Hopefully it's on the next page. Nope, it's because I skipped the page, there we go. Here we are, the AFR 265. Now this is where it's very unusual. When you look at these flow numbers, it's not gonna look like the greatest. I'll do with a long runner. The 400 number is really good, 274, 266, which is almost identical to the 290s. But when you talk about peak flow, 313. If you remember the race rights went 324 at 700. It's almost 25 CFM better at 700. Um, and look at the short runner, it didn't even hit 300 CFM. So great low lift, but nothing after that. And the exhaust flow is actually really good. Of all three, the exhaust is the best. But if you look at the short runner, it's pretty bad. Besides the, four, the low from 400 down, it's great. Anything above that, not so good. So how's that played a part in um, power though? Because you look at the thing, it doesn't look like it's going to beat um, any of them. Like the race right, I shouldn't say that any of them. The race rights being so low there, I knew it wasn't the 270s from Brodex. I knew it wasn't probably going to be able to beat this. But that peak flow, you would figure things might be a little bit different, maybe up top or something like that. Well, let's take a peak. First, we'll talk about the raw numbers. 
Here's the Pro Max uh, 454 O intake. So it's a single plane. She's like, whoa, I want to see the dual plane. You will. It made 678 horsepower, 679, and 631 foot pounds of torque. Let's go on to the next one. This is the with the air gap, in case you're wondering. So I put the air gap on now, makes 664 horsepower, about the same torque, 633. When you see the overlays, you'll see how much difference this really is. I'm just pointing this out real quick, and I'm flipping through fast so we can get out of here. We did also test it with this HV2017 intake, and I only point this out because we tested the same thing on the Brodix intake, because I want to see if this intake, which is really meant to go on a Brodix head, how it would respond with these Pro Max heads. Uh, 664 and you know 627 torque. You'll get to see an overlay in a minute. Now, let's see. Here's the AFR 265 with the 454.0 intake. Remember the Pro Max did like 678. 670. It's 8 horsepower down. And if you look, 636 torque, it's up a little bit of torque. Because you might be saying, well, you know, I've always heard, you know, the smaller runners, more airspeed, more torque. It still has to have enough air in there for it to make power and torque. So in this case, it only gained a little bit of torque right there. So as far as that goes, it doesn't look that way. And you might be saying, what about the low? The It's definitely going to make more torque down low. Well, wait till we get to that. I'm going to show the overlay. I'm just doing the raw numbers real quick. This is it with the air gap, by the way, 652. It's about the same. It's down about eight, which you'll see in an overlay as well. Okay, now for the Brodix. This is the Brodix Race Right 270s with the 454 intake. Its peak power is 632. It's down like 32 horsepower from the 290s and about 25 down from the AFR 265. And about, see right now it's 620 torque, so it's the amount of 13 foot pounds of torque. Ouch. Anyway, going on with that. There's the HP 2017 intake we tested. It actually made, of course, less than it would on the single plane. Okay, let's get to some overlays. This is with the air gap, by the way. So even with the air gap, it's only now just barely cracking 600 horsepower. So it's, ugh, not, not that good. But the overlays are going to tell the picture, so let's take a peek. This is a better way to look at it. Get my post-it note. This is the AFR 265 is in red. The Pro Max 290 is in black. This is with the single plane intake manifold. And now you might say, why didn't you pull the Pro Max all the way down here at the lower RPMs? It was one of the earlier tests. We just didn't pull it down as far. But as you could tell from here, it's still, I mean, if we extrapolate this out, it would have been better than the 265, which in the later tests you'll get to see it when we did. And you'll see what I mean. But it's better at down low. So that whole airspeed thing is going to be better down low. Not necessarily. It is better that 265 is better right there. But look at the top and you have more peak power. What makes this test is really sent kind of weird is because if you look at the flow numbers, the, there's a huge difference. A huge difference. But it's not really necessarily showing up as power as power. That's only 10 horsepower right there. And as far as torque, it's still making more torque down low. So it's kind of a weird situation, but I know you're thinking, well, that's a single plane. Why'd you put a single plane on there? Here's your, here's your air gap. The air gap did tighten it up. And the reason for the single plane testing, by the way, is because I wanted to see if the intake manifold would be holding it back. So let's say, obviously the Pro Max flows 340, but the intake only allows 300 CFM. Then the AFR that only flows like 300 CFM, it's really not holding it back, would hold back the Pro Max. So maybe that would be a bigger difference. And this kind of leads this way because when you put the air gap on, the differences are almost identical. You've got, and you can tell that this is the Pro Max all the way down now. That 290 is still better. But don't forget though, and we need to point this out, it's also got slightly more compression. It's a 0.2 more compression than the AFR 265. So maybe that's making the difference. But regardless, those are pretty much tracking. And there's a slight bulge that the AFR has there. And the Pro Max has it up at the top. Still, that's pretty close. Really close. Really, really close. Okay, let's go on though. This is where things get brutal. This is the Pro Max 290 in black. This with the HV 2017 intake manifold. So this is the manifold that was designed to work with the raised rights. It's not designed to necessarily work with the Pro Max. So it's a dual blame. 
And what we have here is the race rights are in red, 270s, and the Pro Max 290s are in black. Ouch. I will like to say though, look how close they are tracking down low. They're still really close here from this little spot here, which kind of shocked me because the Pro Max does have quite a bit more compression ratio. So if the race rights had the smaller chamber, it might actually have been better here, but I don't think it isn't matching that. I mean, that's a huge loss. I mean, I think this was like 630 or something. That's 66, I mean, 35 horsepower. It's huge, it's huge. Um, and even then it's like, well, it's almost, it's over the entire range. It was a big deal. But let's look at another test too. This is the race rights versus the, um, oops, wrong test. There we go. This is the race rights versus the Pro Max 290s, but this time with the RPM air gap intake. So this is really interesting to me because remember the Pro Max really does flow more than the race rights by a bunch by a bunch and has more compression ratio by a bunch than these race rights. So 10.6 versus 11.08, it's a good chunk. Not like the AFR where they're relatively closer. If you look down low when we're pulling it, they're almost identical. I mean, nose for nose. So even though they have the smaller um, uh, port and it, that might actually be making more velocity and more torque down low because they're, they're neck and neck. However, truly, if you're buying the two, what do you think we'd rather have? It's got the same torque here and way more power everywhere else. And that's what it's doing. So yeah, kind of in a weird deal there. So anyway, um, there's more tests here. Obviously they're in the books, but that kind of gives you an update on some of that stuff on what to expect. Now, why did I bring this head out for demonstration? Because I want to show you this. Because I actually thought this would be a, would have hurt it more than what I thought. And it didn't make as much power anyway, but can just feel that paint scratching away. Come on, baby. There we go. The chambers. Now, this is a BB2 Plus, but I need to point this out. If you get the race rights, any of the race rights, the Dragon Slayers, uh, any of the two stuff, the chamber looks like this from Brodix. This chamber, if you've had a 781, looks a lot similar to this. They are very close to the same. It's almost like Brodix uh, took that chamber, just barely modified it, and became their cast one, and that's what it is. That's why these ones work so great. If you've already got a factory piston, chances are the Brodix race rights are gonna work perfectly for that. Now the pistons that are more designed for this typically have a hard time working with this, but not always. Obviously the, the Molly pistons do not have a problem with either one of them. But if you look at this chamber, you got these huge ledges here, huge ledge here. We didn't, I mean, none of that stuff was knocked out. What you see is kind of how it looked. Ledges here, and that definitely hurt flow. Um, this chamber is not near as advanced as this one. And the Brodix of all, of all the heads tested was a 26 degree valve angle, which is stock valve angle. The Pro Max and the AFR were both 24 degree. So it's got a better valve angle, a much better chamber than the Brodix. So that might explain some of the power loss, but you cannot argue with the fact that this thing, the 270, kept up with the Pro Max at the lower um, RPMs up to about 4,000. Now after that, it's see you later alligator, but still something to think about. But there's, that's the reason why this is out for demonstration, even though it's BB2 Plus. They all have the same chambers when you get the race right in any of them. So hopefully you got something out of this video. Um, I guys, I appreciate you watching. Uh, feel free to leave as many comments as you want. Remember, this is just my testing, I'm just giving you information. You can use it, do it whatever way you want, say this guy's an idiot, it's whatever. Just remember, I'm no Superman, and you guys take care.